horrible on anything else. Oh, we were recording that, <laughs> but let's I start with that. That's fine. Horrible on everything else. <laughs> I was talking about the quality of the audio. If you guys were interested in the unit that we got, we got the Zoom H4N6, I think. H4N6. You're looking at me like I know. We said it we sounded sounds horrible good. and everything, so what do we sound good if, on? If you listened to the food conference that me and Heather were the um, featured speakers for. Keynote. The keynote. Feature, okay. fe- I like featured. The WOVA. The WOVA conference <laughs> on WOVA. Uh, the part where we're doing the decorating, which was the middle part where we go over the gist of the whole speech, it sounds amazing. But then the beginning when you actually see our faces and we're mic'd up, it sounds like pure trash. <laughs> yeah. So that was the age for N4. This is the age for oh. N6 or 8. Oh, it's the age 8. I'm sorry. So wow. we've gotten four generations beyond that with audio quality, and then we have these specific mics. Yeah, not with yeah. And Heather's like, we could use the mics, but then you just we, we holding the mic, a microphone, these the giant kitchen. little yeah. mic. <laughs> I don't know. Sound audio engineering. Respect whoever does that. Yeah. I obviously, don't know what I'm doing. You but. never know until it's gone, and you're like. Yeah, when you heard those two audios uh-huh. back to back. However, we used to record with in camera audio for like the day job clients, that's and that trash, sounded trash. like trash in trash <laughs> that's being taken out by the trash man. Yeah. So when you hear that crisp audio, it's kind of hard to go back. It's hard. It's hard. My ears have been blessed with it, and I do not want to listen to anything else. Yeah, not that anybody cares, but we have two audio in channels, which means your audio is separate from mine. Which means if you are talking really loud, let's say you're just hyped up, I can actually diminish your sound in post because the audio quality. Is that what you do every week? I do do it sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes I'm really loud. Sometimes you're really loud. Do you have to go through and find where we're loud? Or because, okay, uh, I use Adobe Audition. It's smart enough to. Okay. okay. This is you're gonna. This is to, why we do you're podcasts gonna have to do that. Turn you down. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I got this. Speaking of this, now just <laughs> random podcast. I got this teleprompter because one day job client is like kind of gets lost in their own thoughts and it's kind of hard to keep them on track. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know, teleprompter. I found this amazing unit for under a hundred dollars. That's have what you, you heard tried falling. It? Yeah. Did, it's, was it weird? No, it makes so much sense. I don't know if I could read that fast or slow. You can tell how fast you want it to go. At the speed in which we talk? You can say be... if you want to talk really fast or if you, like I talk too fast. So it would slow you down. It could slow me down. But are you reading fast and then getting to the end and it's like, and that's what this thing is that drops. Yeah, like that. Oh. You can t- slow it down and reverse it. Let's back it up. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why the podcast is being recorded in the morning and not the afternoon is because Corey wanted my cousin who does detailing on the side to watch her car. But I did have a cookie pickup this morning at 8. Do you want to tell them what happened with Isaac? With my Isaac. <laughs> okay, guys. Am I, my brain could not literally spell Isaac without two S's. It said there's two S's. Even when I, I did three cookies that took the longest, I okay, did it wrong. It's a confusing name. It is. With a double vowel. But it's not really truly a double S. It's a double A. It's double A or a K at the end. Double pain in the A. <laughs> So Corey sends a class. There's amazing. I didn't know you sent photos ahead of time, but you did. I thank always goodness. send it to her. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah, so she sends it. The stage, beautiful photo, I thought. And the lady's like, thank you so much. That is not my son's name, but thank you so much. <laughs> and Corey's like, I am so sorry. Thank goodness. She told me the day before, so I had time to go and rebake them and do them again. But Would was- there be a situation in which you could have reused the double S cookie? Just take off an S, put an A? Could you? So that's have? what I tried to, but it took off the icing underneath it because it had glued to it already. Could so you, is there any way you could have salvaged it without having to rebake? I did salvage them. So I said, hey, I made you three ones that I'm happy with, but you can eat the three ones I'm not happy with. I mean, I'm saying, is there any way you could have, like, if it took the icing on behind it, could you have added more icing, added the transfer A? If I could make the letters all bigger to cover up the yeah, spot. Yeah, that would have been an interesting idea. But at that point, like, how deep are you in <laughs> Yeah, like, this? let me Just go with the cookie. <laughs> Uh, which brings us Wait, to... Wait, what oh, are we? Oh, we're the... Sh- sh- baking it down. Sh- 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 <laughs> I need a teleprompter. <laughs> we're the Baking It Down podcast that's a subset of the group. Could Put it together, man. Corey. You got it. <laughs> okay, I said. <laughs> read your client's order form. <laughs> Maybe I'll read this. All right. uh, if you're on Facebook, join us at the Sugar Cookie Marketing Group. This podcast is an extension of a lot of the topics that we see asked about or that we cover in that group, which is a blast to see 40,000 like-minded 
uh, cottage home business bakers mostly. We do have storefront people. We do have people who do cheesecakes and not cookies or who do bread and not cookies. But or people <laughs> just starting out who are just thinking about it. I love the concept. Me, I'm a professional lurker. You are. Let me join a group of something I'm thinking about doing. Yeah. I want to see everyone complain and I want to know you how hard it's going to be. In there for two years before you really invest. Uh-huh. In I like it. to – I don't even – I don't even – plan to buy some of these things but i like the group of dynamics and yeah. i like to stick around yeah. and be like you know what that was their firmware update was terrible <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't install it myself i just <laughs> seen other people talking about it uh yeah i joined them for these cameras the 3d printers yeah. i like there's a group them. for everything there's a group for literally everything. aren't we so happy though oh i love it there's a bulldog group where you just post happy pictures of your dog i'm in a bunch of snake groups i love to know other people's problems so you can look Is out that for where them you're yourself. Met your boyfriend yeah, <laughs> out in the grass. <laughs> His name is Isaac. <laughs> oh, oh, um, okay, back to today's back to topic. Me. Yes. Corey had a great idea and talking about, one, this word that's kind of weird that you hear. It's a buzzword, but it also is applicable, economies of scale. And we're just going to specifically talk about scaling, scaling today. Scaling to is a weird <laughs> word. I said it so many times this morning that it turned weird for me. Sneeze. Keep talking. It turned weird for me. <laughs> Well, the last year you're gonna have Allergies, to edit yeah. that one out. Okay. <laughs> I was never told Corey about that editing one. Um, I've been getting hit with allergies like incessantly. It's because you were riding with your windows down, man. Ah, uh, the pollen is just like this. <laughs> eye people yeah. looks great. I'm like <laughs> sealing myself off from the pollen. <laughs> it's just a, I, there's so much pollen right now. They call it the pollening here in the area, I guess. <laughs> that I can see tire tracks on the asphalt in yellow. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So when I start breathing again in about three months, <laughs> this will slow me down and make my voice drop. It's not. You're yeah? still like super fast. Oh, sorry guys. I have to bust no, out the telephone. Fast and nasally. <laughs> <laughs> um, but back to economies of scale. So let's break down what the word is, what it means, and then how we can apply it, even if you are a one man band. How would you define scaling? Uh, I would define scaling personally. Do you want me to pull up the definition? Let's both come up with our definition. Okay. And then we'll find the Webster. Okay. So to me, scaling is taking a process and expanding it multiple times to produce more results, really. Oh, ditto. That's what I, exactly okay. what I was going to say. What were you going to say? <laughs> I think it's putting in things in your work life, in your home life that can make you grow 10x. Okay. Neither of us are right. It's a pro- proportionate savings in cost gained by increase in levels of production. That's the same thing. Okay. We didn't really say it as far as cost-wise, but it goes without saying. It's the cost advantages that enterprises obtain due to their scale of the operation and typically measured by the amount of output produced per unit of time. A decrease in cost per unit of output enables an increase in scale. So lowering your cost, increasing production. That sounded so much like physics that I reverted back to my high school days. And- Microeconomics. <laughs> Physics, yeah, okay. over. <laughs> economies of pulling the scale. <laughs> so back to it. Now, okay, that is actually what we are. I think it applies just exactly. So how can we decrease uh, production cost or production time yeah. to increase output? Yeah. There's a couple ways that Corey and I came up with. I'm going to start off with freezing cookies. I want to say before that, oh. you're all, you all, all might be like, oh, scaling. That's that's for those big brick and mortar. You it do think of it as expanding it just to sound, more. It sounds big. It sounds vast. It's, it sounds like not doesn't apply to me. But economies of scale can apply to us. And if you figure out how to implement these, you will only ask how you lived your life before. Right. So even if it's just you starting out, you're a one-man band in your kitchen – to the person who's a brick and mortar who has employees under them, we can all scale. Mm-hmm. And that's what's great about it. At the end of the day, you only have 24 hours and two hands in front of you. It's not uh-huh. like you can sprout another one. Uh-huh. You can oh, the other day I said, if I had a third hand. What would you do with it? I would just, it, everything would just work. Nothing would drop. How would your keyboard look? Because you would have three hands on there. I would have one hand holding my phone, watching TikToks, and the other two typing. <laughs> but how could, your brain is still just one. <laughs> <laughs> my brain is a limiting factor <laughs> in my life. Um, so let's talk about freezing cookies as an economy of scale. So when we're able to freeze cookies, which I see asked a lot in the group, how soon can I freeze them? What can I freeze on them? Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens when I thaw them? Do you know the answer, Sue? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... Let's talk about when it would be appropriate to freeze cookies. When you are prepping for a big holiday coming. Yes. When we do classes and I have to do the baking by myself and maybe I bake five days before the class, I'll freeze the cookies. Um, And then I'll just bring them to class. They're thawed, ready to roll. But it locks in the freshness. So it's smart. You love it. I I do it. I do it with orders that have been completed and orders that have not been completed. How long can a cookie be frozen? 
With no icing on it. Oh, with no icing? I don't know. A naked cookie. I would say probably the same four months. Four months? Yeah. Oh, yes. man. So nobody has any excuse for Christmas. That's why last year we did the Christmas in July. So you could get your product offerings yeah. lined up and photographed, which means if we can do it four months out, you'd be freezing cookies in September. You would be sitting so pretty yeah. come Christmas. My, Where are you going to get a lot of orders? My limiting factor is my... Fridge space? My freezer is the size of a toothpick. They're going to tell you get those ones where people store the dead bodies? Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, where would I put that? And I don't want to look at it. Sit closer to your mic so I don't have to do okay. the audio engineering. <laughs> um, but okay, I, okay. I do love freezing cookies. And I know some people are like, no, I never freeze a client order. Honestly, I feel like it makes them taste better. I don't know if it's a psychological thing, but locking in that freshness. Well, let's go back. Why would somebody say they wouldn't freeze a cookie? Do, do What's the theory behind that So statement? their theory is that a customer would be like, oh, these are stale. Here's the thing. I agree that the customer would would think that. Why does a customer need to know? They person? don't. I've never, I've never mentioned it. Yeah. It would throw me as an end user. Somebody's like, okay, I'm going to bake these five years out and you come pick them up in <laughs> yeah, five years. Yeah. So I'm like, oh. So it's the same. Like, uh, you never want to know how the hot dogs are made. Yes. That phrase. You don't need to know. You don't need to tell your client everything. They're yeah. not bakers and they don't know how royal icing works. Yeah. And if you're worried, I've I've tested this a bazillion times. If you are like, I'm going to freeze them, but maybe my client won't eat all the cookies and they'll ask to, how do I save these? And I'll give them the introduction to freeze. Can they be frozen twice? Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Cookies are easy. And they taste thought. just as good. Okay. Now let's put royal icing on them. Decorated cookies. Are we talking about fragile icing now? Is it going to crack? Okay. I like where you're going with that. I have tested so many different things. Like, can you freeze airbrush? You absolutely can. Mm -hmm. The things that are most delicate are like when you pipe the eyeballs yeah. on or when you do sprinkles. So like the PME sprinkles, if you freeze the cookie and it thaws, sometimes it can lose that hold on that sprinkle and an oh, eye I will see, pop I out. I see. So are you possibly recommending doing the eyeballs after thaw? No, like, because you want to put them in the icing so you have one less step. You would have okay. to just reattach it either with edible glue or a little spot of icing. Okay. But you, it, it would have you cutting open the bags. So, yeah, that was my next question. Okay. Are you putting them in the heat seal I'm putting seal them bags? in the heat seals bag. Do you have to? You... Don't yeah for the decorate it it would just be better so you don't have any butter bleed or anything so like that. Naked cookie can go in without the without, cellophane or yep. whatever. Mm -hmm. And the decorated cookie you want to have them done except for run the risk of doing eyeball edit audit. Uh huh. So and I always do thaw them twenty four hours before. So uh, any yeah. issues as I'm packaging them, I can see and I can fix. Okay. Okay. That's great. That's a great economy of scale because we can work ahead of time. We can yeah. produce a lot. And when it comes time to, for production numbers, you can increase production flow because this is already done. Yeah. So let me just, if you're hearing this for the first time, I just want to make sure you know the rules of the thawing. If your cookies have icing, what you want to do is heat seal them. Put them in an airtight container. Put that container in the freezer. When it comes time to thaw, now this this is the most important part. You're going to take it out of the freezer and you are going to let the entire airtight container come to Without room temperature. It. Do not open it. What this is doing is calling, causing the condensation to go on the outside of the box versus the inside of the bags. Mm. So the worst thing for royal icing is water. We don't want that condensation mm. in the bag. So when it becomes room temperature, not a second before, you can open it. I have tested cookies where I've opened it maybe like where it felt like still cold to the touch but not mm. like frozen and it still created condensation. So we need to let these bad boys sit in this airtight container for how long? Thawing? Uh, it's it depends on your house, okay. um, what you do, but I usually I do it, it would really depend on the humidity in your yeah. house. Okay, another question. Speaking of freezing, if we're on this uh, icing, used icing. Oh you, yeah, so how long? You can do it for the same four to five months. But Goodness. I will say the quality. If I don't see red and green in your fridges by <laughs> August, <laughs> sometimes the quality of it can deteriorate over that time. Okay. So when you maybe you'd have to probably maybe remix it if you're leaving it in that long. What if we did a month. I, I still remix. Okay. Well, why? Just I to guess. test, like test that quality. Last thing we want is put this all in a bunch yeah, of cookies. Exactly. Time's wasted. This yeah. is economies of scale. So sometimes the icing can play weird when it's frozen. Specifically, when I do the pre-made black and it's mm. frozen, I have had some so issues. So remixing is great, but it does save a lot of production time doing this and freezing it. Ahead yeah, of time. absolutely. Or at least not wasting. Yeah. If I have colors left over, I will automatically save them. In your if, fridge right now, how many icing colors are in the freezer? Uh, uh, um, like how many, there's so many colors. Really? The, ra the rainbow. <laughs> oh, really? 
really? Yeah. Are we talking like 20 bags? Talking about 10 bags? 20 bags. And then maybe every two months I get fed up with seeing them and all. And then you do a, a, re- a, purge. a refresh? I'll purge, yeah. So most of these are leftovers from orders? Leftovers from orders. That's what it is. So if I needed a quick green, instead of having to make all icing, I'll just go grab it, thaw it, mix it again, and put it in the bag and ready to go. If Okay. I think you're talking about sage green, if I've seen your last order. Sage. What if you had a sage green frozen, Uh but you want a punchy Christmas tree green? Can you add more? Sure can. Great. Sure oh, this can. is a great cost mm-hmm. saver. And I think this concept, because I see it asked so many times in the general baking groups, mm-hmm. uh, is lo- is foreign to people because it is. It does sound crazy. It does. But I love the thought of it. I love the thought. <laughs> see what you <laughs> <And> then- <laughs> We'll be here all week. Uh, so that's a great one. Mm-hmm. Now let's move on to our next economy of scale. Controversial Eddie is going to allow you to increase production numbers at a rate you cannot produce manually. <laughs> but it's... If- Eddie, for some other reason, people are hit hit or miss if they think it's the word. Did you imagine is weird like hating an airbrush machine? <laughs> I know, but that airbrush is the airbrush machine is saving well, you because you do not have to make the icing. The projector is saving you. No projector. The, there's so many tools out there. Like I use the sweetest tears stencil. I know holder. there's a lot of tools out there. I've dated them all. <laughs> We should do these in the morning more often. <laughs> the <laughs> color right show is post Olive Garden. <laughs> uh, there's so many tools out there that can really truly help you scale, mm-hmm. and that is why I'm mean, a firm I would believer not, in them all. As a business owner, to limit your ability to increase production because you feel like a tool is cheating, uh, well, call me a cheater, man. I want to say like, who's who's the cheating place? Like, That'd be like, where is the line drawn on cheating? Like, are we allowed to use computers, or should we code those and build them ourselves? I like, know. where oh, I'm taking orders through a computer, but I'm not allowed to use an airbrush, right. or I'm not allowed to use a like, projector. Where's, where's the the tool too far? <laughs> now, that's the tool you don't want other people to have is a tool too far. <laughs> yeah. So I would assess your tool bag. That's what I always say. Don't fight your gear. Get yeah. High, last thing you want is an airbrush that's faulty. That's going to eat in a lot of production time. Mm-hmm. So sometimes, and this has been my mental messaging of my 30s is spending a little bit more could save me a long-term loss of having to replace a lot of cheap things. Yeah, that's true. Uh, don't follow me for financial advice. <laughs> it's costing me a fortune. <laughs> uh, but that's saying getting a little bit of a nicer airbrush or a nice... What I hate to see is people are like, I'm in the middle of an order and my Pico yeah. protector stopped working. Yes. Yeah. So I would say find something, invest in something because there's, you know, buying $25 projectors 50 times or buying a $200 projector one time, which one's actually going to save you more. And also think of the cost of Botox saving because I had to go through that last week. And I think it's outrageous. Amen. Another one that is going to save you time so you can scale is a dehydrator. Oh, that's a great one. And I know people are like, it's like, I'm not sure if I should use a dehydrator. What if it dries out my cookies? What you need to buy is dehydrator sheets. And that's where your cookies are placed on. So the air isn't coming through the bottom of it. It's only going through the icing. So this dehydrator is really pulling moisture out of icing to shorten the drying time. Yeah, so to speed up the whole process. So if you need it to crust over pretty fast. That's going to really help production numbers. Small investment, though. A lot of these are small investments. It is. It is. Except for freezing. That's just an Unless you need a a time investment. (laughs) Yeah. Who needs a dead body one? (laughs) Would you get one? So I thought they. about it, and I wanted a smaller one than the dead body I one. I think they do smaller dead body ones, half dead body ones. Does it need, like, a ton of electricity? I'm sure. It's a freezer. Okay. I've thought about it. I have thought long and hard. Maybe put it in your basement. Maybe the freezer. Yeah. That'd be an interesting idea. Just food for thought. Yeah, food for food thought. Food for thought. Okay, moving on. Well, what did you just say? The tool, The dehydrator was oh, that's a another great tool. One. Yeah. Um, thinking back to pull it back to Eddie, uh, corporate orders, I don't know what happened to small business owners, but you all are suffering from it too. You love to see your logo on an apron, on we a spatula. We love to see our, our uh, logs. Small business owners, medium-sized business owners, not cured from the symptoms of wanting to see their yeah. logo on things. want to slap it on everything. They love to see it on a logo cookie. And you may think, well, uh, Eddie is just pressing print. It actually, exactly, that's exactly how it works. It literally goes through a printing software. But it slaps a logo on a cookie, and business owners love it. Even if you don't, it's you're not the customer. I could not imagine <laughs> piping. Oof. If someone ordered 500 logo cookies, I could not imagine piping on 500 cookies. I could not. We had a client, or Corey had a client. I was helping with this because I built a file. They had a red circular logo mm-hmm. with white text. So we made some of the circle cookies all the colors. Yeah. And then the other one, we did a pattern of their logo. Obviously, it was all red and beautiful, and they yeah. loved it. Even though you bakery people may think it's kind of ugly or less than, 
That is not what the client wanted. The client wants to see that logo and they want to see it 50 times and something you get. Yeah. And they ordered again last minute. If I did not have an Eddie, I could not have taken that order. Yeah, but I was able to take it. No, Eddie isn't cheap and no tool technically is if it's not yeah. zero dollars. Eddie is three thousand dollars too. It's not one of those things you necessarily want to buy and then let it sell itself. I yeah. don't think most of life is like that. So you're gonna have to really want to market that and then you're gonna be one of those you know, rags to riches story where Eddie paid for himself in six months. Yeah. But that requires a lot of hustling. Uh, one lady was asking, she was doing like a wedding fair venue. Uh-huh. I think it'd be pretty cool to have Eddie as demonstrating whether or not anyone buys from it. It's just entering that thought into the yeah. minds of people that this is an option. It's pretty new. It not is. a lot of people yeah. know about it. But definitely corporate orders. Another thing you can do to even if you have an Eddie is make your circles ahead of time and freeze. <laughs> oh, that's now. Yeah, and then the re- you can scale. take those last minute two dozen mm. orders and just use those frozen cookies. It, you You will be the savior. Here's something people. I've seen Corey do, and I thought it was pretty uh, schnazzer, is someone said, hey, can I get an order for tomorrow? I know everyone likes to make fun of those types of people. Uh, I'm those types of people. I don't know how long it yeah. takes to produce this stuff. Uh, like, you know, can I get my card detailed now? I'm ready. Like, That's you don't I'm... know when, what these Well, you don't know what are. you don't know. Right. So when the client comes and says, I actually need this tomorrow, you know, something got canceled or I forgot or something like that, you can say, hey, no, I can't do hand pipe. But what I can do, if you're interested, is these printed cookies. And the person was like, absolutely, you saved my butt. Thank you so much. Yeah. Now you have the question of, you know, people say, should you charge more? Should you charge less? You are covering your cost mm-hmm. and your cost dictate what you should charge. It's not an opinion. Well, it's Eddie's not a feeling. Last time. Oh, I feel like it's cheating, so I charge less. You got to know your numbers. And Eddie's three thousand dollars, so I'm not. I'm not charging less. I'm giving people the option though to get something last minute quickly. Yeah. And or in big scale, like yes. when you need those giant orders for Christmas. Or saving the time that maybe an airbrush, if it's a five-step yes. airbrush, yes. that you can do in a one-step press control and piece. And those, those four-layer stencils cost a lot. You're paying for each one. I wonder if people audited their stencil collection if they would have an Eddie, technically. I wonder. I don't have enough stencils. One, I don't love an airbrush because I'm not you, good at it. You are not good at it, right. So you don't <laughs> like it. You just complain about it yeah, all. Yeah, I know. I'm, I don't like it. I did use it yesterday for for the order this morning. It turned Boy, out Why didn't you use any? You don't have... I need the tray. Okay. Get me... About Sprinkle Factory. The tray. I for Sprinkle Factory. I, know, I forgot to order. Okay. Don't put that back on me. I... The printer... Okay, one <laughs> ant... Oh, let's talk about 3D printing. Oh, that's a good one. I'm I'm getting ready to psych myself up to place this order for not the Soval that I mentioned before. Trash. Join the Facebook group. <laughs> Didn't like it. <laughs> but I did find this other one so that 3d women in pretty 3d printing yeah pretty printing <laughs> That's right. uh they said oh if i could if i could buy it i would go back and buy the carbon then i was in a car group and they were talking about 3d printing parts and i said hey to the guy what are you using he says creality i said oh i think i'm breaking up with creality and i was looking at this carbon another dude comes in and says you will buy that. You will never touch another printer. You will ask yourself why you didn't buy it ahead of time. You will never look at See, this is your again. thing, like investing in the little bit of better yes. products so you're not buying a few right. of the bad ones. So thinking of 3D printing, let's talk economies of time scale, right? So you, from what I've seen, Corey, was t- you texted me late Sunday. I did. said if you're bored, it's 1030. I right? really had it way. soften you up Corey said, for if it. you're bored, you want to print this? Uh, <laughs> I'm not that bored. I will never be that bored. Uh, so... What she, because you'd taken, was it this order that, the yeah. Isaac order? Yeah. Well, you had really shot that together. Yeah, I really <laughs> say that one for the last second. <laughs> so, Gory wanted me to make, it was like a construction theme or something. Yeah. Okay, so she came on Sunday morning. I had printed it Sunday at nine. It was ready to go at Sunday at 10. Yeah. Cutter was. And I, if, if a customer would have wanted something specific with a fast turnaround time, Typically, without that option, you'd just be like, I'm sorry, I can't, or I have to put it on a plaque so it won't look like, you know, the shape that you wanted. But me, I hate doing two layers of icing because it takes twice as long. So I don't like flooding the white and then putting an image on it. I want it to just fit that image so it's one color. That's what I tend to sell to my customers. So I was able to get with Heather. Yeah. So now let's take it. So granted, you did not pay me at all for that. Uh, I will. I was thinking about it today. (laughs) I only charge you $4. <laughs> you never paid for a cutter yeah, in But years. here's the problem. When your cutter wall is bad, you're like, this is good for one time. Did you get it? Oh, yeah. I call my cutters the one and done. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it makes it to But like I'm investing in something. I'm tossing. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's not I will $10. Say, others, sometimes these cutters, the wall will split. Okay, you you While 3D printers, before you come <laughs> at me, I know my belts are loose. I know. <laughs> I don't want to 
fix them. I want Listen, a new printer. When you're desperate, you'll take a split cutter over Let me explain to you. There was a, the valve in the washing machine didn't cut off and had a, a water leak. It wasn't anything drastic. Mm. However, it introduced a lot of humidity. The antithesis of filament is humidity. I want to say that you probably weren't even storing that correctly before your water loss. Oh, lost. absolutely not. And I was like, saw let God decide. <laughs> you said, you know what? That is a good excuse. My favorite thing is when people are like, can you, make, can you dial on the sprint? No, water. <laughs> Not dehydrated. <laughs> yeah, so but I was like, the oh, bamboo don't company? know, huh? The, bam- the bamboo printing company sells a dehydrator for your filament. Do you run it 24 7? Uh huh. You run it 24 7? It's not what you think it is. I think it just ma- makes sure moisture oh, doesn't get yeah, in, not maybe. like what you got, like bacon. Going, like. I have no idea. I'm really making up the answers you just asked. Okay. Me right now. <laughs> I have no idea how it works. So, uh, Heather, the so- standard in that printer is a time lapse camera now. Oh, hey. Did we do that? Me, You're going to get me, famous. Me, me. <laughs> yeah. Well, look for me on TikTok. <laughs> Heather 3D Prince. <laughs> uh, so kind of – so I was thinking – the one I was looking at, the one I'm talking about, that bamboo, carbon, whatever, whatever, is 1500 That's outrageous. You in Micro Center, I get targeting out all the time, can get the exact same printer I have downstairs with tighter belts for 100 bucks. Nice. And that's what I've had for years. Yeah. The Ender 3 and Pro. And it has come in so handy. So handy. Uh, for just cookie cutters. Yeah. Yes. Corey finds it very handy. But like when you need something real quick, or I think we were teaching a cookie class. This is how handy in the economies of scale we can do. We were upstairs, I think it was a Christmas class, and we were like, this cookie cutter is too big. Yeah. It's going to eat, like destroy their workflow at the class. Can you go print a smaller one? So yeah. we went downstairs, built it out real quick, thinnest cut wall in the history of the planet, printed it in like 30 minutes, and then we finished up that set. It was set. fantastic. So there's no stress. I'm really anti-stress. I mean, there's stress of trying to get bed adhesion, yeah. if you know what I'm saying. But there was no stress of having to order or having to give this giant – because I think we had that cookie cutter in three sizes. We did. And like I think because we had made this decision yeah. in the past class and we forgot. <laughs> yeah. And, and I brought the wrong order. one. I was like, this cookie is trying to wear a mess. It was like Which one ornament. was going to be too much dough. So we're going to lose profits It was eating a ton there. of our costs. It was going to wreck our class workflow, which has to end yeah. in an hour which, and a half. And more icing. It and was just, it was ugly. Yeah. So we – I mean, that was <laughs> – <laughs> was ugly. But still, it was ugly what I printed. The ornament is the ugliest cookie I've ever seen. I know. It's a circle I know. with a top. I know. We could have made I him know. rounder. Yeah, he needed to be a uh, chunky. He we was made very him, thin. Like, and not even <laughs> correct <chunky>. circle. <laughs> <laughs> I've since learned how to make perfect circles in uh, Fusion 360. But that said, talk about economies of scale when you can streamline eddy dehydrator a freezer really mm-hmm. and and 3D printing. And 3D printing will save you money, so much money in the long run. Mm. One, you're not paying shipping. You're just paying for the STL files, or you can design them your own if you're creative like that. And then you're printing right there. There's no weight. There's no stress. Right. And you and you may think that, you know, there's Cookie Cat software, which I think is a little bit easier to get started, but you get limited long-term. I think Cookie Cat only makes 3D oh, printed cookie cutters. Okay. Fusion 360, people are building like car parts oh. from it. So you have a lot more flexibility and long-term use from yeah. And I always encourage people like get into something, even though the learning curve is just a little bit harder, the long-term payout will be there. You'll know how that yeah. software works. Get into the groups. Ask those hard questions, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. There's so many genius people. Yeah. Out there. Sometimes I'm reading a Facebook group and I'm like, five of these words I've never heard before. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I have no idea what you're saying, but I'm going to give you a like. Thank you so much for your feedback. Yeah. Uh, so moving on, we have freezing cookies. Mm-hmm. Love that freezing icing, bulk making icing. Yeah. I love that. And then we talked about Eddie tools that are really dialed in. I love that. What else can we do? I'm going to bring it in. Sure. Software. Okay. Software yeah. like Zapier. If you haven't heard it, and I may be print, I call it Zapier. It may be Zapier. I don't know. I like Zapier. It sounds Zapier. Zapier. Zapier is Zap. So it's webhooks. And this is all sounds like buzzwords. Yeah. Trust me, if I know what it means, it's not hard. But I can basically say, hey, when someone sends me an email to this email address, add it to my Google Calendar. Right? Yeah. So that is just a little time saving. So technically what I have, a bunch of little Zaps. Yes. And you can sign up for a Zapier account and get fr- five free Zaps. They can run like, I don't know, 500 so, times a month. Oh, 500. So five different things and it can... Five different web hooks that can run X amount of times So month. give us some web hooks that you Okay, seen. one I have. If I set up an Eventbrite listing, add it to my sugar cookie classes calendar. That's how they're getting added. I'm not doing any of that. 
So as soon as I put an Eventbrite listing up, it sends Zapier a webhook that adds it to the Google Calendar that Corey and I both subscribe to. Which helps me because I won't take a custom order on that because there's so much prep right. that has to go on. So because Corey subscribed to the same calendar, we both see like, oh, forgot, like this cookie class is mm-hmm. coming up. So that's one that I have. I also have if in Google, I want to say Zapier has so many integrations, like I would say <laughs> millions of options. Wow. So definitely go look. The platform that we have the Cookie College on is called Podia. When someone signs up, add it to the Google Calendar so that Corey can see there was a new sign up and look for that person's name yeah. when they join. Yeah. Like that one. Uh, when anybody signs up for the Cookie College, it adds it to a spreadsheet that I then go and audit and make sure that person gets in the Facebook group. Yeah. And Live imagine and die by if you did not have that spreadsheet. This would all be manual actions, which economies of scale. I'm able to save time because the computer is doing it all night long. Uh I don't have to do it anytime. Other things I have, if I use a label in Gmail, I call the label and I do this. Okay. It immediately puts it over into a Asana project that I tell. So each email account that I have for each company is associated with a Asana project. And when I use that specific label, it adds it as a task. Oh, you're leaning green over there. Yeah. Yeah, With my limited knowledge, I am doing some kind of paper. <laughs> Any client websites that we host, I have all their leads copy onto a lead sheet. That way, when they're saying, are you doing your job? I can say, here's your lead sheet. Yeah. Here's the leads that have come in since we've been working together, stuff like that. Um, autoresponders. So when somebody does sign up for the Cookie College, immediately they get an autoresponder set up through Zapier connected to Gmail that says, hey, this is an autoresponder. Here's the five things you need right now to get the most out of this. Oh, so value right off the bat. Right off the bat. So they immediately, yeah, sure, you got signed up, but you got invoice. Podia doesn't do much more than that. But immediately you say, here's Heather. I'm in your inbox. I know you signed up. Let me walk you through five get started. Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah, I can use Zapier to cross post if I post to this social platform, post to this social yeah. platform. Uh-huh. I can use Zapier to send automated reminders. There is so there's a lot of Zapier connections with Square. And I know we don't use Square, but a lot of you guys do. Yeah. So hook it up. Hook it up. Do you have and, a Zapier class in the college? Yeah. It's called Web Hooks. Oh nice. It's kind of an intro to it. There's just so many options. I almost say if you find something monotonous or mundane. Go to Zapier and see if it will do it for yeah. you. Yeah, And again, you get five free. They're not that hard to set up. The um, wizard to kind of set it up just says, click here, do this, touch that, do that. That's and my kind done. of thing. Tell, yeah. me, tell me what to do with my hands. <laughs> There's so many options with that app. I think it's one of the most slept on apps. Uh, and the fact that they give you those apps free. We are in the paid plan, obviously, because I find it just, it's a workhorse. Yeah, there's it's, zapping everywhere. Oh, there's zaps emailing people. There's just zaps. Uh, just running amok. <laughs> when you guys submit a Facebook Live, it, it immediately gets into a spreadsheet of zaps that tells me everything that you submitted so I can just see it in one place. Nice. Ideally, and I don't do this, you'd have a virtual assistant, which is what we're going to talk about next, yeah. who creates the event listing. Yes. So that's another one. So let's recap. Freezing, using freezers, mm-hmm. using tools like an airbrush machine or an eddy or a 3D printer. Highly Your recommend. tools used you. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, is that what we had after that? So then we go Zapier. to software. Mm-hmm. And then you want to talk about virtual assistants, which I love. Virtual assistants. Heather, is Heather. if you say you're a virtual assistant, odds are she'll hire you. <laughs> I love other people doing my job. Yeah. So a lot of things that we do in our day-to-day business takes a lot of time. And it's not necessarily mental you know, work, it's just time in. If you have something that you do not like to do in your business, whether it be, you know, create an email list. Yeah. That is boring. Zapier can do that. Oh, Zapier too. too. Um, create, what else could you do for your VA? I'll tell you what we use a VA for. Okay. So I know some people are like, why does the baking group require you to give your email address? I agree. Hate it. There are so many scammers and spammers on Facebook. With they're just, It's not somebody. It's a script. Yeah. And they're just joining, joining, joining. One thing they don't do well when they try to join a group is put an email address mm-hmm. in. It's a great way to vet people. And I think, yeah, obviously, people are like, well, I don't want to give you my email address. I don't want to get spammed. I've never sent an email to the baking group list. <laughs> So you like, they stole my email. No, yeah, well, I can I immediately uh, the Wednesday Wednesday yeah. newsletter is only four thousand. The baking group email list is over twelve thousand. Yeah. I could easily triple my numbers, but that's not how I want to grow my list. I want people to opt in, not be forced against <laughs> yeah. their will, and then opt out. <laughs> yeah. So what we have the VA do 
Corey and I tried to do this in house. Yeah. I realized it was not efficient Wanted when to we poke did it. My eyes out. So we have this VA. He's from India. I found him on Reddit. I love him to death. Um, Anakin. <laughs> and he goes in whenever he feels like it and he'll copy and paste your name and your email address to a list and approve your join request. If there is no email address or the questions aren't filled out, he'll just decline it. Yeah. That is a, I haven't figured out a Zapier to do that. Admin Assist is a AI assistant in Facebook groups, but it doesn't really check to vet you. Yeah. So having yeah, Anakit do it has been just a peach and then I pay him on the first yeah. $50. And I want to say that man is... There's zero pending members there for well, mine. He must have gone on vacation. He doesn't tell me what he does. Yeah. We only email once a month. But he, Corey's like, did Anakin quit? Because <laughs> there was 100 <laughs> pending members. And then the next morning, there was zero pending there members. There was zero. If on me, there's 7,000 pending <laughs> members. <laughs> yeah. So having a virtual assistant even do something as mundane as that mm -hmm. really frees up a lot of time. And people are less upset. Like, I've been pending for the baking group for five years. Why yeah. am I not getting in? If someone reads through your emails of back and forth and collects all the data, like, like, if you don't Could have you a form, I mean, having a form would really help. Mm -hmm. would <laughs> but you help. can make your VA read through 50 emails of colors and stuff. Uh -huh. What are other tasks I've seen VAs do? I've seen VAs plan out a schedule. They'll get your calendar yeah. together and say, hey, here's what your week is looking like. I think I can free up time by moving this day. Those are a little bit more expensive virtual yeah. assistants. But at the end of the day, if it saves you time. We had a VA that helped us with social media posting. Yeah. And it, it was, was a very mundane account. Yeah. Corey and I were like, eyes were bleeding. And we're like, hey, if we hire you on a monthly basis, and then you set terms, and then you have like VA meetings each week, like, hey, here's what I need, here's what I expect, and you know, yeah, keep it going. I from mean, there. It, I, I, I felt great to hand that over. That felt great. <laughs> Some VAs, uh, I'll say, treat your VA like a therapist. Date around. Don't get a committed relationship. <laughs> anyway, that's my dating life. Uh, find a VA that fits your style. Yeah. It doesn't mean either of you are wrong. If you and a VA just don't click or synergize, you're going to have to have like Anakit never talks to me unless I forget to pay him. But a there's weekend. a lot of trust you have to have in your VA. Like he could boot us <laughs> from the group. He cannot. No, I did not give him admin never access. Never mind. Right. So he has moderator access and can do enough through that. You got to kind of say that, but I do tell people who hire marketing companies, you're going to have to, yeah. you're going to have to trust me, buddy. We're going to get in this bed together <laughs> and I'm going to be able, but you want to make sure that you can build that trust. And then yeah. once you find a virtual assistant that you like, never let them know. Never let them Never recommend them. Don't They're, let anybody now, know. Sometimes I see in, in the groups, people are like, yeah, my VA assistant's like, you know, I'm naming my first child after them. People mm -hmm. are like, can you drop the name? And they're like, mm -hmm. no, I don't no, want to write in the name. No, you'll never know. <laughs> Because they think if they give the name out, it's going to take attention from their account. Yeah. Now, if you're saying, hey, VA sound really interesting, I don't know a lot about it. There are groups on Facebook of virtual assistants yeah. that I've joined. I like to read what they do, <laughs> what they offer. <laughs> I mean, I'm just looking everywhere. And you can kind of say, hey, here, I would like to hire somebody. You know, follow the group rules, but it's a great way to source somebody. Yeah. Uh, Anna Kit is the guy who cleaned out this is so funny on the Vendy Blendy day yeah. like the day that midnight we had a, you can't you can no longer delete groups if there's any members in it so we had to go through and manually delete nine or six thousand people I know. Uh, so I said to Anna Kit like I'll try to help you do it, and then we're gonna go to bed if you wouldn't mind he's in India so he can yeah. miss his day in our night uh, then in the middle of the, like at 4 a.m., he's like, panic, panic. I think I've been removed, but Corey had accidentally deleted him. I was, I was trying to help out. And I was like, oh, delete. <laughs> so I said, Corey, I'm not making this man do this. You and I will now do it. Yeah, and then, we'll, so then know. we were able to archive the group after that, which is hilarious. Oh uh, yeah. But a VA can save you so much time. So you can focus on that growth in your business, taking more orders, um, customer outreach, marketing. Consider hunting for a VA now for your Christmas, for that yeah. Thanksgiving and holiday yes. rush time. You could really, really start finding that perfect VA fit now and then say, hey, let's get yeah, this contract versus started. trying to have to feel that it out. That would be hard if you need them. Yeah. And you don't even have, if you don't even have time to do your own work, having to hire somebody to do it as well is going to be yeah. a little rough. So you could start scouting that virtual assistant. A lot of them are American-based. I know that I use people out of India, uh, really like them, just really easy yeah. to work with. But you can find somebody, you can have a virtual assistant that's almost like your employee of sorts, yeah, just like contracted. Your, your yeah. What Heather does for the virtual assistants that we have had is make a how-to video to send them. 
Um, what it does, it takes Heather out of the... the That's another great economy it of is. scale. And they can always go back and replay it. So if Heather wants something done a certain way, instead of the VA being like, Heather, how do you do this again? They can just go back and replay the video and it helps streamline the process. I'm going to tell you what app I use for this. We do have the paid version, but the free version will get you most of this. It's called Loom. It has a desktop application version, but it also has a Chrome extension. So what I can do is I can say, hey, VA, and I can talk to them. This is exactly what I want you to do. Here's how I want you to do it. Here's the workflow. Now guess what Loom offered? It's AI. Of course, AI is like the buzzword in the last month. It summarizes what my video is. No way. In very short. like So I was recording the digital downloads, and it did (gasps) everything in a boop. Yeah, yeah. yeah pretty- I will say that will really help you with your VA, really take you out of the equation, but really fit them to your style mm-hmm. of things. Yeah, I really like it. VAs can also do follow-up emails if you want to say customer feedback. I hate customer feedback. If you want customer feedback, they could be the follow-up person. Yeah. Um, and then you can give them you know, their own uh, workspace account for Gmail and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So really, really like that idea. Do we have any more on the baking side of things? Oh, wait, you're about to say something. Uh, well, I had one that you Go had. Go ahead. Facebook ads. Facebook ads, the 24-7 salesman. Yeah. I I like Facebook ads. Facebook will spend your money. There is some advanced ad courses, and there's boosting posts. At the end of the day, there's a better option than the other, but neither is necessarily wrong or bad mm-hmm. or your, there's just a more effective, more efficient way to spend your money, and that's through Ads Manager. But boosting a post isn't necessarily a waste of money. And I would Mm -hmm. say it's a great gateway to kind of check out ads. Now put a low spend amount. Yeah. Don't, don't forget what your ad spend is. We don't want you to have like, I made a hundred dollars, but I spent 500. (laughs) You know, we want to say, but I do like ads working on selling for you using the platform. A lot of times I'll see in the group people like I posted to my page and I got nothing here. No one has reach. So what you need to do is force it in the feeds of the people who want to buy. And that's going to, instead of having to post 20 times and hoping that, you know, something hits, you can force the ad into their feed and really wake them up for a portion of the price. And you're like, I don't want to pay. But here's the thing. The time that you're making those 40 posts, you could put that allocated cost towards your ads Mm -hmm. and save money that way. Mm -hmm. I've seen these pages, speaking of lurking on Facebook, my favorite pastime, that just create the page, but they are really just ads yeah, ads that. being run for these products. Like there is one ad I got for years, but when I go to the page, it hasn't been posted to. Is that ideal? No, but isn't it effective use of ads? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Basically, their Facebook marketing campaign is replying to comments on this ad. Yeah. And that's the 100% why the page is there. What we want you to do is be active on your page right. and on the ads. But there's only 24 hours in the day and two hands, unless you have Anakin and there's four hands. Yeah. But that's how you'd kind of really let Facebook work for you even when you're sleeping. Now, Facebook's AI is pretty smart that it can serve. Like when I was creating an ad the other day, it was like, do you want us to like show us to people who are more likely to respond? Do you want us to show this in? There's like, they're sneaking ads in weird places now. They are. Like underneath someone's post, there'll be a little ad. I know. Or in someone's reel. You can, yeah, I could say yes to putting an ad I, in my reel. What do you think about real placement? Of ads? Yeah. I'd so say I no. Saw, I'm not in a mood to ad click. You know what? I saw it on someone else's reel and it was Are you was talking not, about the banner at the bottom? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't that invasive. Yeah, but that's my thing. I want my ad to be invasive. I want you to okay, see it. yeah. From an yeah. ad But I didn't read it. Did I click it? No, but. When you go to create an ad, if you go through Ads Manager, you can say, I don't want it to be placed in real. Yeah. So that's why we're saying Ads Manager is a little bit more comprehensive than just a boosted post because you can have more oversight of where this ad is showing yeah. up. And I'll tell you, the way that I use a bo- <laughs> boosted <laughs> I was, <laughs> post, the way that I use boosted <laughs> post is I'll usually boost it to the people who like my page who are in an area that I can service. But see, the reason why you can do that even though your targeting options are there. That's why it's so important to keep your targeting dialed in because yeah. when you go to run that ad, people who like your page and now it's – yesterday it was and people like them, not people and their friends. And people who like them? And people similar to them. Oh. <laughs> and their popularity <laughs> contest. People they went to high school with that voted for really them for prom. to set up the zip code parameters <laughs> yeah. so it's just not like going everywhere. But my thought is if you're really dialed into growing a yeah. target audience mm-hmm. in a targeted spot, you don't necessarily have to be so worried about zip code. Of course, you'd want to run, you know. Um when you are, when your page is like 99% cookies from all over the world and you're trying to sell a local class, you are going to waste your ad spend by doing people who like your page. Yeah. It's really, how did you grow the page? If you I'm not even it- sure on a, can on a boost to post, you limit the zip code? 
I'm you can limit post the area. in the feed. I want to say yes. Ads manager. Yes. Oh. I want to say yes. Interesting. I usually do the ads manager thing. That's why Heather's okay. putting me to the test. You can here. now boost posts in ads manager and it gives you again yeah. more flexibility. Every time than- I make a post now. Just like an organic post, it'll be like, "Do you want to boost Quite this?" Exactly. Zucky's like, "Take their money. Ask yeah. them if we can take their money." I said, not, "Not now." <laughs> like instead of no or yes, it's maybe like, not later. Now. <laughs> yeah, maybe later. Yeah. Like what a weird conditioning. Not now, but maybe later. Yeah, I know. Like, don't tell me no. Yeah, I don't my heart. I can't Just take maybe not. Like I'm that. not ready to date you right now, but maybe <laughs> later. Um, so I really like that one. So to recap, we have freezing and thawing. Mm-hmm. We have using tools like an Ender to 3D print or an Eddy to print commercial orders or just shorten the lifespan of air brushing. Projector to speed up the process. Dehydrator. Yeah. Then we have virtual assistants. Yes. Oh, no. No, we have web hooks. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Really like that one. There are so many options, even like tiny things that you wouldn't think like I can automate. Just it's so simple. Even a caveman can do See, it. See, it's because the word Zapier and – Web hooks sound so big. And okay, ugly. imagine that you have two people and they want to shake hands, but they're five feet apart and their arms are stubby. You, how can they shake hands? Well, Zapier is a middle person that grabs one hand and grabs the other yeah. hand and shakes them both and says, "You guys are now shaking hands through me." That is a web hook. Nice. Does that does that explain? No. What it does? I mean, I the I, middle handshake. The middle handshake. It, yeah. it connects two things. It connects two things to bring simpatico. Simpatico. <laughs> And it was our Facebook last guys. virtual assistant. Oh, virtual assistant. Wow, well, we're, we're not good at that. Yeah. Memor- memory's going Memory here. Is not <laughs> it really is. Corey thinks Phoebe's losing his uh, hearing. hearing. I tested it. I was like, Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. I'm not even going to go out loud anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally looked on the last one. And I was he's like, like oh. startled when you sneak up on him. So we're not sure if he's daydreaming so hard of a better life or if he's deaf. Someone's probably like, take your cat to that. The cat is 18. <laughs> It's hearing is probably gone. He's <laughs> uh, an adopted cat, but I enjoy watching that cat break the rules. And then people have a weird relationship. Uh-huh. Like sometimes she gets annoyed. It's called with codependency. It. <laughs> yeah, you guys are on. Yeah. Okay. Then we have Facebook ads. Love it. Do you have Love anything it. else? Let's go think of the ways that we use economies of scale. Huh. Kinda. That was my in list. The <laughs> Anything in baking? I know we talked about a lot of the business side of things. Is there any more of those bacon hacks? <sighs> One thing that I've had to work on myself so I could scale is really getting every all my baking supplies organized. Mm. If I, I when That's I have a time to find a cutter and it takes me forty minutes. You were using a cutter organizing app. Are you still using it? It didn't come out for the iPhone, so oh, I had you to switch yeah. mm-hmm. 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 Those, are, I think Google Keep is a free. I saw option. someone is sponsoring CookieCon that is a cutter organizer. Don't know the name. Never used them, but I did see it as a sponsor. Okay, okay. But okay. organizing your stuff, like I went and got a stencil binder for my two stencils. Yeah, you because make it, did you make a reel about it? I did. I did. And people ask you a million times who made I the did. thing. Who I makes did. it? The sweetest tears. Yeah, they were asking if they holder. couldn't Google it. Would it show up if I Google it? How much is this bad boy? Because I saw some the stencil of binder holder. Yeah, not the stencil holder, the binder. Stencil okay, binder. Wait, sweetest. The sweetest tears. Tears stencil holder binder. Stencil. You're talking about binder. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying what's showing up. The stencil storage binder. Yes. Cookie Countess has one. Sweetest tears has one for seventy. Seven, no, that's the stencil holder. I'm oh, talking so about binder holder. for your stencils. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of the inserts. Okay, let's see Sweetest Tears website. Do we know who runs this? Is this a big no. company? Uh, oh, no, I think it's just her. Oh, so the binder is 26. The inserts yes. are eight. Then you can get really cute color cardstock. Why yeah. would you want that? I don't use them, but if you wanted to separate your two stencils so you can actually see what oh, the design nice. is, you can use well, the cardstock. She card thought of everything. And then she has tab dividers so you can make. Yeah. Which is saving you even more time. It's really a lot of cooking. You know, I saw on, there's a subreddit called Anti-Consumption. I thought it was more about minimalism, but it's just about hating everybody. Uh, but there was a chocolate bomb maker and they had organized their Lazy Susan to have all the molds. And anti-consumption, the person who made the post, which called OP, was like, this is disgusting. Look at this consumption. And someone's like, oh, no, bakers actually have to have these molds to offer their products. And then the person got downloaded. Oh. 
But I was thinking a lot of the organization will save a lot of time. It and does. also one thing I hate for people is when they don't know what they have. And buy it again. And they buy it again. That is that is that, that is, is eating me. into your margin, man. That is me. So what I've done is I do one organizing thing a week because oh, nice. I'm already started in the business. If I would have started this when I started. You'll never know. You never know when you're going to start. You never know. You never know. So I went in my boxes. I like when the tissue paper matches the theme. But that means I have a lot of tissue paper right. because the themes are always... Nothing so I, do I impulse buy more than tissue paper at Target. It, love me some tissue yeah. paper. I also hate working with it. Okay, because you're buying the cheaper one. Yeah, absolutely. You need to buy like the... Chunkier one. one. Okay. So I have put all my all my tissue paper in one box. So I can visually see like, Cord, do not go buy blue again. You got it. My phrase that lives around free in my brain is, if you don't know you have it, it has you. Mm-hmm. And there's, mm-hmm. and I wish there was a way to calculate your storage costs. Of course, we're not inventory managers, but there is a cost there of is. having something sitting on your yeah. shelf. It's not a cost that you see, and it doesn't hit your bank account, but it is a cost. And the cost, the benefits, the profits off it go less and less the longer you have it. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So speaking of inventory management, in the beginning of COVID and everyone was staying at home, and then we all, all of us, all of the entire world had the great idea of now making their patio more functional. Yeah. Because it's all you could do. So everyone went and bought Target and Walmart's patio sets. Uh, And then obviously they had no inventory. So they placed the orders to China for these big, giant patio sets. Of course, with the whole supply chain issue that COVID, it resulted in these patio sets coming in so late that nobody wanted patio sets anymore. Because the the world had opened up and now they're out and about. No one wants to sit at home. Right. So Target and Walmart were like reporting to shareholders, listen, our inventory costs are sky high because what, you know, supply chain has caused limited inventory storage. Plus these patio sets are huge. So we're going to take an L and sell these at a loss. Yeah. Because in the long term, it will save to us free it up. Costs. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, as styles change, uh-huh. <laughs> this has nothing to do with cookies. I also realized that people were like, oh, I don't like outside. I don't like it as much as I thought I would. Yeah. It is yeah, buggy. It is hot. <laughs> um, as styles change, like if, you know, you know, last year or when hot cocoa bombs were super mm-hmm. big and mm-hmm. now they aren't as big, um, having those things that just the boxes for them, you know, as styles change, no one's into co- hot cocoa bombs. We're into cake pops or something. You There's have to a keep that Facebook in mind. group called Cutter BTS, and that's buy, buy sell, sell trade. trade. Uh, I see these people, and they're like either just cleaning out their shelves, they're cleaning out duplicate orders, but they're they're selling a lot of these sets, mm-hmm. and they're recouping a lot of their costs. Not you're not going to make a profit, you know, yeah. but you're going to be able to get a little bit back, and that's going to help you organize. Instead of crawling through a hundred mm. cutters you do not even like, you have never used, you just bought because Heather said they were a dollar at Target. <laughs> sell them. Sell them. Just get rid them. of them. If nobody wants them, give them away. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a thought that really helped me is that the thing in your closet is limiting the opportunity of someone else to have an experience. Mm-hmm. So I have I have this obsession with uh, business jackets. You do. Uh, I had 26. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, you're not even wearing one in the year. <laughs> so I could donate these. I didn't sell them because I don't necessarily enjoy the whole Back selling more clothes. Thing. Shipping. I hate the UPS. Yeah. Uh, so I said, if I donate these, maybe one person or maybe 26 people can go to a job interview and look yeah. really professional Put without back having in to the pay. local economy. The academy. In yeah. this academy. So that is an assist to help you break up with yeah. stuff. Yeah. A great idea. If you teach cookie classes and you have a bunch of cutters you don't use, give them away at the genius. cookie classes. People oh, be like, oh my genius. goodness, I've never gone to a class where we got If you had so a grab stress. box and say, yeah. hey, find you two yeah. as you leave. Or, hey, come next next class. I'll have even more. What a nice You're going to get them coming back, man. And then you're going to be able to let a lot of the people who take the cookie class immediately want to go try out their new skills. They do. I, they light up when they see your little I always thing. give them a little, a little cutter that it's, I will not pay over 30 cents for each of those. But they really like, like I could go and try this right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that'd be They'll a great trade idea. like like a Pokemon card. Uh-huh. Like, can I have your? When somebody's late to class, they will always take that person's yeah. cutter and switch it out. <laughs> and, and they'll be like, look at us. And I'll be like, I, ain't, right. I didn't see anything. Whatever happens in Google Glass <laughs> days in Google Glass. Okay, I really like, I really like the organization tip. It's an economy scale one you're not double buying which is yeah 
hurting your bottom line. Two, you know what you got. Uh And three, you can incorporate that into your offerings. I really like the tip, though, of getting rid of the cutters you know you just don't like. Yeah. And I know I have them. And why am I keeping them? I don't know. I just let them go. Mm -hmm. Let go, let go on. Mm -hmm. Right? So that takes us through the economies of scale. Now, your business and our business may be a little different businesses. So things that you're going to find that work for you, would love to hear about them. Yeah. Uh, Please post them in the Sugar Cookie Marketing Group under hashtag podcast so it doesn't get deleted. (laughs) Uh, But let's go through the Facebook Lives. I finally got them up. I saw that. Look at you working, girl. I know. It takes me some time. You know why it takes me some time? Mm. But I even use uh, assist in this because I want to make a graphic to put as the event cover. But then I want to make a group post. Yes. Then I want to make a feed post and Mm -hmm. then I want to make a story post. Because at the end of the day, my job when you guys teach Facebook Lives is to get eyeballs. Yeah. I have a So yesterday or two days ago, we had insurance. Now, Shell, I did her dirty on the podcast when I thought she had asked so yeah. many questions. No, no. She's been in insurance for 15 years yes. and knew. So she taught a Facebook Live called Insurance. What does it mean and do I even need it? She's already taught that. You can go and watch it live right now. I think it's even still pinned at yeah. the top. We had Raya do pricing display and options for farmer's markets. That one is great if you are wondering how to get started. Now, if you're like, hey, farmer's markets are on my docket this year, hold on. We have a two yeah, coming yes. lives. Everything I know about farmer's markets. I love that Charlene did this because she's she's doing exactly what we asked with the lives. You know something I don't know. Just tell me what you yeah. know. You don't have to be a farmer's market expert. You don't have to be a millionaire mm-hmm. farmer's marketer. Yeah, Tell me what you discovered. Just tell me what you hated. Tell me what you liked. Tell me what to expect yes. and tell me what to brace yes. for. Yes. And if that's not enough, Kristen said the download on farmer's markets, and those are all upcoming, those last two. So you can watch Mariah's and you can watch Shell's now, and then you can look out for Charlene's and Kristen's coming up. Nice. 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 Those are awesome. But just a reminder, we are now at 156 Facebook Lives. That's all free. Taught in this Free group. as a bird. A bird that is very free, you will be like Bird in the hand these. is two in a bush. Is that correct? Two birds, one stone. One Facebook Live. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday, Wednesday newsletter. Okay, unfortunately, I accidentally told Corey that I kind of like seeing parents talk. Mm. It was like not an obsession. No, I'm it was obsessed just a ta- with them too. So Corey only sends me TikToks of parents. And I was like, hey, possibly I didn't think I did, but possibly I let on too much that I like birds talking. I just was casually. You did say this on like last week's Yeah, podcast. well, you haven't slowed. No, because now you I like You haven't them. slowed at all. I'm in the bird. The bird. Algo. Algo is, is there. I just love how they throw, throw out random words. <laughs> Give me a kiss. How are you doing? <laughs> so anyways, my TikTok inbox is completely birds. You know what I was thinking about? Birds have no ears. They just have holes in the side of their heads that's protected by feathers. Yeah, we have these big flappy things that are all, they all are shaped different that we call ears. Like if an ear you think lobe. of how complex an ear is. Yeah, it, it's like almost like would a dish so we can like bring sound in. Right, like the face kind of plain, right? Two holes, a mouth. I but know. then your ear is like an ear. It's <laughs> yeah. just designed. If you didn't have ears, people will make you an alien character in movies. That's how much ears add uh-huh. to a face. But they're also weird ears. They're so weird. And then we pierce holes in them. Yeah, why do you only have like two in that one and one in that one? I was kind of going for this asymmetrical vibe. I wish it was in the bottom hole, not your second up hole. Oh, well, I'm not going to grant your wish. So get your own <laughs> ears. I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> I, I, have like, I like fidgeting with the right side. I think the right and left brain I are very different. I had to take all my earrings out. They hurt so bad when really? I slept. It just was painful. Jen is getting her upper earlobe done or like one of these cartilage piercings. Yeah. You can't just go to a piercing pagoda or a Claire's <laughs> like, and just just have them do the sh- yeah. chink. You need to go to a tattoo, tattoo parlor that has a piercer mm-hmm. and they use a needle. It sounds a little bit more painful. But what I've heard, and you pierced people can correct me, is that it moves the cartilage aside versus the other one breaks Squishes the cartilage and leaves it. that to the infection. I will say when I was doing my Instagram growth for sugar cookie classes, I found a company and it's called Upper Lobe. And all she does, she's a nurse. Talk about niching it down. And she does your oh, nurse. Yeah. Is she local? Uh-huh. Did you, are you thinking about it? No, I just I just like her stuff yeah, now because she's in. She was looking for yeah, a... Yeah, upper love. She does it in your house. If your kids are scared, you you know, like you have a birthday girl and What's she wants to... to hold my hand and tell know. me it's going to be okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I had uh, gone to a tattoo parlor 
possibly because I hardly have any tattoos at all, I felt kind of like mm-hmm. judged yeah, for the I lack know. of tattoos. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm trying to get it in and I be know. cool. It's almost like if you don't have a giant tattoo, you don't belong there. So why are you even in the building? But to get a giant tattoo, you'd have to have to be there. <laughs> People are like, I don't like tattoos are interesting but now oh they opened up in dc what was it called it was no regrets tattoo parlor okay because it does the tattoos that disappear oh my in like a soul. year no regrets i was like that's hilarious that's hilarious does it like 100 percent disappear i don't know i assume they use this different kind of uh ink that your body can yeah. absorb more quickly that's how if you see like tattoos on people who've been in the sun or older skin, it's UV damage to the ink. Yeah, it breaks it down small oh. enough so they can take it. And that's why it almost looks the word is blown out the sides of the tattoo. Ah. Well, speaking of, when I went to the Botox lady, it's unfortunate that, that you got to pay for that. I think it should be included in being a human life. Yeah, like, yay. Oh my goodness, right. I'm so sorry. Where Arlington. No. Oh, I almost pressed the answer. We don't have a phone call together. Hello. <laughs> See, I don't know how to turn my watch sound off. Wait, they have, they're done helping you. Also, they're saying Google it. Just oh, Google it. I like you guys. You guys are my Google. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, when I went to the Botox lady, I was like, hey, this new trendy thing you see on TikTok is Morpheus 8, mm. which apparently is an extremely deep needle cu- uh, coupled with a laser. Yeah. And I was like, hey – what do? I don't know what the price is. I think it was so high that she yeah. was actually talking me out of it. I want to say it's as much as cosmetic surgery is. Yeah. So, whoa. Uh, but she was like, it is so painful. But what it does is it damages the skin in the second layer yeah. with the needle and the top layer with the laser. And your body's like, oh, no, we got to go fix it. And yeah. it happens to Brings accidentally fix some wrinkles. to it. Yeah. This lady in front of me at the Botox place was had gone three Morpheus A treatments. And I was like, I don't really think you need them. And she's like, that's why. Oh. And I was like, well, you look great. Thank God the lady told Heather, yeah, you don't. She said microneedling. Do my, she said, yeah. uh, if you guys are interested in Morpheus A, no, I, I'd pass away by the price because I asked what microneedling cost and I passed away. I know. I got on that TikTok algo of Morpheus A. People were like, they look like they had been burnt on the sun yeah but then but when it heals yeah yeah this late this the lady in front of me was like how did you like it and she's like i did the three i hated it actually it was the worst thing i've ever felt yeah. but it works so well I'm doing i it know again. See, it, beauty is pain <sighs> pain is beauty. anyways if you're wondering about the morpheus eight <laughs> heather has no say? idea about it but <laughs> you can google like, it <laughs> In terms of it, we need to go to Olive Garden. So okay, you're not okay. My stomach is eating itself. I've been up since four, so my Olive Garden at four because I texted you at six and I did get a high. Six in the morning? Uh huh. You did not. I woke up at six to see if you texted me back. Oh, I did not. Rude. Yeah, because I knew you'd be asleep. I said she's sleeping for another five. But I woke up to see and I saw that I was ghosted. Why would you read that? That would wake me up instantly to physically read something while I'm sleeping. I because like, I couldn't right, sleep. It's done. Oh, so you've been up since four? No, then I then I saw you didn't text me back. I was like, well, okay. <laughs> Try to close my eyes again. Let us know. What is the Cookie College? The Cookie College is a group on Facebook. Now, it is a paid membership, but my job and Corey's job is to make it so you'll be like, how did I live without a Cookie College? How did I live without a Cookie College? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, okay sorry. Go to an Olive Garden Comato State <laughs> immediately. <laughs> The Cookie College, you can learn more about it at thecookiecollege.com. But it is a, it is actually everything we offer. The Cookie College gets everything. That's the phrase. It is a private Facebook group with mm-hmm. almost a thousand people really, really, really rooting for you. Really I, rooting. I have been surprised. So the, the main group, the Sugar Cookie Market Group is 40,000 awesome yeah. people. But the engagement in the Cookie College trumps the group of 40,000 every time. And the content there is really, really yeah. dialed in. They have become the best the best of friends in there. I call each other roomies. Um, I feel awesome. like they came for me and you, but stayed because of everybody. I think they were like, we don't like you anymore. We are our own friends. <laughs> I know. I'm always you guys like, are, what's the RAs? You guys are RAs and we don't like you. <laughs> uh, but really great group. But now on top of that, it is these cookie class kits. So if you yes. were interested in getting into teaching cookie classes, I mean, it's everything you'd need. And they're all new shapes. They've never been designed before. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, you can say, you know, $76 a month ain't chump change. It ain't. But kind of back to the economies of scale, if I teach you how to do it, you only need me for a month. Yeah. We have people that say, hey, I just want it for one month. I'm going to take every class. I'm going to absorb everything. Heck, if you joined today and stuck in for one month, you can go back two years worth of content yes. and snag that stuff. And if you're like, you know, 90 classes and Heather's teaching another one this week. 
it's that seems overwhelming. If you say, hey, I want to come and I want to learn how to take the right photos and you only take those courses, you can be in and out in a month and you could be growing your business. And then maybe in a couple months, you'd be like, okay, I'm ready for email marketing. Just sign up again. Mm-hmm. You can leave and come back as I tell much people, as you like, want. People are like, you know, okay, once your membership ends, a con- you can't access the content anymore. Record it. Record it before your membership ends. Go watch it again. What am I, I going to do? You Drive over, over there? Be I'm hoping, police. I want you to record it. I want you to implement this stuff. And I want you to be like, wow, I made so much money. I'm going to join back My, again. If you did not learn something in college, we would not have it because we'd be like, okay, people wouldn't buy. Oh, I didn't really learn anything or didn't really like it. Our goal, our 100% goal is to get you to learn something. Literally on Mondays, Corey and I will be like, how can we get them to stay longer? What can we do? What can, what value can we yeah. add? Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty great. And then now the roomies have started teaching live. So South Jessica Wolf will be teaching a live on chat GTP. Nice. She's really into that yeah. thing. Uh, did you know a chat GTP, you can say, here's what I have in my fridge. What can I make? Make me a recipe from this. Yeah, there's a website that co- that's called yeah, that. But I know. I want chat GTP only. Mm-hmm. If it's not chat GTP, then it's not me. No. <laughs> Uh, I think AI will change our future. That's what they say. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know, but I was seeing there's a school that has gotten this new software, this college. Uh, chat, uh, GTP zero. It, it tells you if it's written it by It tells chat. you. Any portion written by AI. Yeah. Well, there goes my economy. Of I know. There. So as new as it's coming out, but then they were like, yeah, write it for blog posts. But will blog posts be where and where that, google be like a that's whole ai facebook group that i'm lurking in yeah <laughs> where they try to see if they can get google to tell whether it is or isn't but you know what samsung announced yesterday what? they were going to switch the default browser to bing <gasps> google's talks stock talk stank <laughs> there's stocks tanked at the thought of samsung oh. switching to bing bing if you don't know is owned by microsoft who did uh, it was like four billion dollar investment yeah. into chat gtv well, I can um, tell you, uh, the only thing I use Bing for is to download Google. <laughs> right. But they're saying now with AI integrated into it, it's quite a different experience of which I've never experienced. I know. I need to sit down and really just take a couple classes on the functionality. They said chat GTP can code software. In After Effects, you have to write these lines of codes to get text to move. Yeah. Of course, I have, but it can write that for you. Again, at the end of the day, yeah. it's not better than the human who knows more. And if anything, chat GTP is only taught by humans who uploaded information to the web so what it'll be interesting that? to see how it yeah how it I will, yeah i will i will be a lot of people use it for your copywriting yes if you were like i do not know what to say instead of being like i'm desperate buy my cookies maybe go to the chat gtp yeah and add variables like write this for a five-year-old and it will rewrite it for a five so you can keep saying keep rewriting this for somebody 10 years younger and it will be like okay yeah. i can do that <laughs> we were gonna be fine. I, I went to go to our sponsors okay and i just saw this post remember the ae core scratch and yeah, dent yeah. sale here's someone who just got their mm-hmm. scratch and dent i just opened my scratch and dent purchase from ae core backers and i am in love the very small blemishes on these are easily hidden and easily missed unless you're really looking the deep red and the matte eggplant are so beautiful. I can't wait to use them with my cookies. Thank you, AE Core Backers. AE Core Backers sells uh, food safe backdrops in so many colors and cake people sizes, mm-hmm. uh, really opening up the options for what your photography can do. I think you would not ever go back to not having a backer. The number one sales point and why I even looked and searched out for AE Core Backers, because I stalked her. Like I ordered one before she even knew who we were is because it is food safe. And there are not many that are rigid, matte, scratch-proof, waterproof, all that, that are food safe. Here is an interesting thought I had. Our older sister moved at the beginning of COVID into one of those new builds, Stanley Martins, mm-hmm. with the gray and the white Beauty. and the marble. It's stunning. And she said, yeah, I love this house, but all my photos are looking exactly the same. So she, even with this absolutely stunning kitchen, which you were like, that's yes. what I'd want, said, I need to mix it up with some bright colors. And I think she got the apricot and a couple others. Yeah. Because she was like, it just gets boring when everything looks exactly the same, even though her house is the house you'd want to live in. Yes. She's even said, yeah, I got to get these backers too. And they are very nice. You can actually save 20% if you are in the market using the code sugar cookie at checkout. And that's aecorebackers.com that you'll go to and they're always adding new ones now bummer news on the second spline said coiny post the five pound bakery bag bag is sold out it's been sold out is it coming back 
I have no idea. I did just order some one pounders. Yeah, people them. are upset. Riots are forming. Riots. I had asked the Cookie College. Somebody made a post, and they were like, "I'm never going back." I tried the bake it bake thing. I drank the Kool Aid. I'm in, and I said, "Okay, not the baking twin. Why?" And I've heard these things. Puffiness. Yeah, the puff. Uh, I heard not having to add anything additional. However, someone was like, I'm getting a little bit of bleed in the same thread. And someone's like, add just a tinge bit of white. Is this sounding correct? Oh, yeah, for sure. It, so what does adding white do? Adding white just creates like it has more color to it. The thing about Bake the Bake, it already has white food coloring in it. Right. But adding a little bit more can just maybe stabilize it just a tinge bit more so the colors are If you going back live more. in a humid environment. Oh, I would I honestly it's it's hit or miss. We live in a very human environment. My colors I haven't bled except for yesterday. I used the black premix stuff on the white and that did bleed. The black premix from Bake A Bake? No, she doesn't make okay. it. So you just get pre made. There's a bunch of companies so that you sell put it. two brands on top of each I other did. and there was some there was a little bit of bullying. Well, so I would say Start with the recipe on the back of the bar. That's what I use. And then it seems like adding white, if you have any issues, may give you a little bit more elbow room, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, the reviews from a non-baking person to see people that excited about it must be pretty good. Code twins at checkout to save. 10%? 10%. Um, but let's hope that five panda comes in because that's a great deal when you can get it is, five pounds. And it is free shipping. I did go to her website and oh. confirm. So it is bakeitybakeidaho.com. And what you're looking for is royal batch. And what you're waiting for is five pounds. And what you're using at checkout is code twins. And what you're saving is 10%. Yes. Last but not least, we actually already talked about him. But it's Mr. Eddie the Edible Printer. That's Which I know makes it sound biased. Uh, but I'm not. No, I would say if you join and lurk in the Eddie group, yes. you're going to be able to see honest feedback of what Eddie can and cannot do, yeah. of what he is capable of and what he has problems with. However, I have yet to see people not be so stoked they got him. I think what I've seen is people see Eddie and they think about the software and they get overwhelmed so they don't open the box. Yeah. not That's going to be uh, 100% zero ROI. That's going to be a yeah. huge loss. That's You're a giant paper open the box. Uh, it, I did do the setup without their coaching. And for me, I, I think we're all capable of it. Just follow systematically. Uh, if you're if you're one of those people who kind of just barely reads, that's me. not not this one. You're going to just want to read every sentence. Make sure you're being methodical. Don't just plug everything in. Like, you know, people are like, it's a box. I'm opening it. Yeah. I'm plugging everything in. No, let's just follow the <laughs> system setup and you yeah. think you'll be just okay. I think it'll be fine. And then you get an hour-long coaching session with one of their support person yeah. people. Yeah, and you can go over all your questions, you know, hey, what happens if this, if it does this? But then you can also go to the group and you can search people who have had your same question already. Yeah, and then in the group on Mondays, they allow vendor posts. And you can see people have created even more specific tutorials if you didn't think yeah. that one came in the box. I now. said already, but I should have said all already. <laughs> Queer needs some... What do you get from Olive Garden? I, I have never Corey ventured. Corey only gets this one thing. Cheese ravioli marinara sauce. I'm not I've sure. never ordered anything different. Is it cheese? Ricotta? I Manitoba? Think it's a, I think it's a mix. I don't know if it's just ricotta. Okay. Does it have any flavor? Yes. The sauce. It's, it's in sauce. sauce. It's under the sauce. Uh, I prefer either the five cheese baked ziti or, I know, keep it standard, spaghetti with meat sauce, no meatballs. You did, you did go left field and got what the waitress did it you was, like it? Um, it was great. However, my intestinal tract is not built for food that <laughs> is that rich. <laughs> tortellini. Uh, yeah, tortellini with Alfredo sauce yeah. and chicken. I'll say every bit of it was flavorful. It was just a lot of butter. Heavy. 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 You're taking a nap. You're going <laughs> to you're gonna breathe real the slow. The podcast is going to be You know where you take sleeper. the seatbelt and just pull it out just yeah, a little bit? Been there, done that. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Been there, done You got a twin trust? You got a 20 to rest? Um, you know what I think I do? I'm really hyped on these 3D printers. You are. Uh, so yeah, that carbon, I'm probably going to place an order for it. Now, here's my thing. Uh, I want to tell people who buy an ender. And while I was talking about the water loss is because I do not have an enclosure for that ender. I did buy one. It is so unattractive. Yeah. So it is so bulky. And to kind of see the front, I just, the you machine want the vantage itself point is bulky, right? But with this enclosure, it, so what happens with 3D printing is you need to keep the heat in the area of the print high. When, what happens if there's cold air but 3D printing works off of heat is you're going to get probably an adhesion issue. You're going to get 
the layers of the 3D printer are going to start pulling up off the print bed. And when you have so many problems introduced and you're trying to fix them, it gets pretty frustrating. This carbon bamboo printer comes in an enclosure. So what I can do there now, it also can print four different colors. Of course, this is just adding to the cost, Um, but it reads its own. It's, you know, there's so many different types of filaments. So it comes in an enclosure. It comes with a camera. It comes with all the problems kind of fixed and nothing. No printer is going to be perfect. Um, This one just sounds pretty darn close. (laughs) If I pay you another $4, can you do a favor for me? So you will get $8 total. Can you print out my two W2s? Oh my goodness! I hate logging in. Today's in tax books. day. You waited Folks. until the last moment. You know also, what I if you're going to fund your IR, your Roth, I think today's the last day of the day. Too. You did yeah. Say. So, just so you guys know, let's talk a little bit about investing. I'm not telling you to invest your money. I'm telling you how to invest. I was snowboarding earlier this year, and I was sitting with an older couple, and I was like, "Hey, what are you? you know, what are you guys doing here?" And they were like, "Cause you're on this lift <laughs> forever, <like> snowboarding, <laughs> trying to have some time alone." <laughs> but because when I was by myself, they shove you constantly yeah. with other people. And he was like, actually, we're retired. I was like, oh, man, living the dream. I was like, if you could give me one piece of advice, old man. <laughs> he was like, a Roth IRA. I said, dude, I just opened one. I'm embarrassed to say that I'm in my 30s. But what you can do is go to fidelity.com. Really, know, you know, Fidelity. Yeah. Huge yeah, investment company. Uh, open up a Roth IRA. You can still fund 2022. Today is the last day. Oh. You can fund it for $6,000. There is an income restraint, but likely... It's in the hundred and fifty thousands or something. Okay, you can fund that and get it invested today. Is you can just fund it today and invest it tomorrow. You have to, you do have to invest them after you fund them, yeah. or but you can always withdraw your principal with no tax implications. Oh, nice. The um, things you make your profit or your margin, or you yeah. cannot without paying a. It's a retirement account. Yeah. So if you shove six thousand in it today. You got it for 2022, and then you can fund 2023 tomorrow. So the limit for 2023 <laughs> is 6,500 inflation adjusted from the 6,000 of last year. Just saying, your snake is burrowing, and I'm obsessed with looking at him right now because Heather has this snake enclosure, and it's glass, so he's under the top layer, but I can see his entire booty. <laughs> they say a happy hog nose is a stocking hog nose. Is a what? Oh, like he's around. If looking he's at me? looking at you, but from subtle vantage points, it means he's very healthy. He is, and he's like squishing. He does he's not digging. think once his head goes under that, he does not realize you can see him. He thinks oh. only you. Oh. He can see you, A little baby. My twin interest is: we were walking the other day, and Heather said, "Hey, hunchback of Notre Dame, can you lean into your phone, your speaker, a little hunchback bit? <laughs> of Notre Dame?" You, just, you know, I have text neck, text neck. What? It's when you are always looking down at your phone. Text That's what neck? they call it. Yeah. Oh. When I'm decorating cookies, I have to be right over top of it. You know, steadily you know, heavy breathing over this cookie to make it look halfway decent. What I noticed while you were walking is that your alignment, your you know, because you want <laughs> your spine. skull, yeah. the back of your skull, to be aligned with your spine. But it's your not. head was so pushed forward. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone agreed. You were basically curious. a ball <laughs> walking. <laughs> you were rolling. <laughs> I was falling forward. <laughs> when I said it, you were like, oh, yeah, I have a huge – Yeah, because uh, now Heather said it and my husband said it. So obviously two people who really have nothing in common but me saying it. But Corey got this – okay, I know everyone at one time has bought a posture thing, but it ends up hurting your armpits. It does. Just it, kind of in the front. It's like cuts. Because like you're trying to fight with the bad stuff. posture. Yeah. But you found one that was made of like all stretch cloth. It was way ex- more expensive than the – Like a cheapo one. But if you're not going to wear them, then then the $20 wasn't nothing. saving. Yeah, so this so one is 60 It is $60. i am tempted. It's called the most comfortable one, and that's why they know they're worth. Mm-hmm. Do you get it on Amazon? For it. Huh? Did you get it on Amazon? Amazon. I almost feel like somebody can make it, but it adjusts from the front. So the other ones that adjust in your armpit, would, if you have any issues reaching your back with yeah. your hands, that's really hard to get to. But this one adjusted from the front, so you put it on like what, a backpack – and then tightened it. Yeah, the and then tighten it. It has a little Velcro on the front. I would say I wore it under my shirt yesterday. And I think if I wore it over my shirt so you would see it, it wouldn't have had any rubbing against my But a little bit arms. of like rubbing? There's a little bit of rubbing. And it's because when I was doing it's cookies, yeah. I, I had to s- stretch over. But like if you were typing like this, you wouldn't feel it at all. There was a subreddit for like, I think it's called, again, I just lurk everywhere. I yeah, love reading other people's lives. But it was like, what's one thing you can do to make yourself more attractive? So I'm like, oh, I'm so curious what the answers are. But first, second, third, top vote of comments were posture. And also more confident. When I am hunching over, Nate says, be confident, stand up straight. 
then I get I offended. I would smack him. Yeah. <laughs> you be confident, yeah. stand up straight while you're walking out that door and find a new wife. Uh, but yeah. So I yesterday, think... I wore it all day. Okay. And usually at night when I go to bed, when I lay down, my body's almost like I can feel the tension leaving because my Cause spine, it's fine, is like, spine I can like, like finally, straight. Yeah. But yesterday I was up straight all day. I did not feel the pain at the end of the day. I thought I was just feeling the pain because I was hunched over cookies and decorating uh-huh. or things like that. No. So oddly today, Gams is like, I'm looking for posture correct. I'm like, did you talk to Corey? No. She says she has shoulder pain from being yes. so hunched over as well. Yeah. I think it's one of those things. Uh, I saw this weird art project, uh-huh. but they were like, of course, it was blown out of proportion. If the person who works at a computer ev- evolved for like generations, yeah. how hunched and unhealthy it would I'm look. I'm living that life, man. Yeah. So kind of that posture, correct? I think it's a good vibe. I think I'm going to dive into it. I definitely tried the cheaper ones with the Velcro. No, I did not. And not the vibe. Unless you wore it over your shirt. But this one almost looks just like a sports bra, really. It is the material. That material. Yeah. Stretchy. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. yeah. Heather was like, yeah, you got some weird back fat at the top of your back. No, now no, I have it's to wear called, a jacket for the rest of the day. It's a symptom of high cortisol. Which I'm working on my stress. Yes. So if you're wondering what I'm saying, which sounds really rude, the way Corey said I said it, which is not <laughs> how I said it. If you reach right where your neck meets your shoulder blades, you'll feel your spine. That area where the bone is, will create a fat pad with high cortisol. <laughs> that's what it's called. <laughs> and you'll kind of feel that it's kind of squishier there where it looks a little – and that's due to, you know, uncontrolled stress and poor posture. Yeah. So why should we live our lives suffering if we can do small things a day that mitigate stress? Yeah. So my back pain is something I do experience that I was like, oh, I just need a massage. No, I need to stand up straight. Right. 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 So I think it's a good, I think it's good vibes. What else can we talk about? What else can we bore them with? Yeah. What could we bore I them with? I feel chatty. I do. Chatty Kathy. Yeah. When it's literally time to eat, we are 42 minutes late to the Olive Garden's opening. Here's my thing. I bought this old collector car and I realized you cannot get parts for it because nobody wants to give them up. And if somebody sells them, they sell them so overpriced mm-hmm. that almost like one plastic piece it was $70. They know their worth. They know, they know the supply demand. And so what you can do when you see a market in distress like this is you can disrupt it. So I found a guy in the same car group who is like, I will 3D print these parts, but what I have to get is one part. So you might be like, Heather, why don't you just 3D print it yourself? Don't know how. He don't has know. the scanner. This is the thing. It's reverse engineering. So you take this part, you scan it, then you bring that into Fusion 360 and build it backwards. Yeah. It's hard to build it forwards if you don't have the original part. So I am shipping him. You're taking a gamble. Yeah, I am taking a gamble with this guy. I'm shipping him some parts so we can disrupt this car market. But I think he might take the parts and then yeah, not you know disrupt what? and charge. That would be whatever if you're going to be selfish. But I told him my goal is to to keep these cars on the road at least 10 more years. We're, we're going to have to take – so what I've also been doing is people have been selling the manuals. These cars are from 1990. Yeah. Uh, so the manuals are selling for – you know, obviously they're finding them in their basement after yes. they don't have any car. But they're selling at a, such a surcharge. So um, I found a guy. He gave me three books. And I said – he said, I just want them not to go to somebody's basement. I want them to be used. So I said, you know what? I think I'm going to scan them and upload them to the cloud and absolutely decimate the flipping market yeah. for these. So I found three more books, not even for the car that I have, for the generations after it. I'm going to scan those. Got them last night. Nice. Gonna, this is my little passion project, screwing over people who are greedy. Nice. We don't have to say screwing over. Um, you know what I post? I'm not, I don't know. Are we allowed? I don't know. I'll have to do some I research. I don't know. I don't know. That seems a little spicy and dicey. A little spicy and dicey. But I feel like you got pretty close the other day. What did I say? I don't know. Something where I'm like, oh, no, podcast land. That was when I said marketing nuggies and know-hows. No, we didn't say that this week. You didn't even. What did you think about the content this week? I loved it. I think this is a really solid bet. It was my idea. (laughs) It was. It was. (laughs) It was great. What else can we talk about? (sighs) I think they got to be bored by now. If Uh, anything, they've turned it off already. Are you guys turned? Oh man, it's one twenty-two. One hour and twenty-two. Yeah. Bye guys. Bye guys. See you later. (laughs)